and also over on my YouTube channel. Uh, my name is Brandy, and I'm the owner and artist behind Brush by Brandy. Well, they're getting really up and close. Oh, yeah, that close? Yeah, yeah. All right. And we paint here live with you guys every Thursday evening at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'm on the West Coast in California. Uh, that voice you hear behind the ca camera is my husband, Sean, and he um, will be here to help answer any questions. Maybe. Read your comments. Yeah, it it depends on what mood you're yeah, in. Yeah, it depends it on be, my mood. It could be really hit or miss. Yeah, okay, shut your face. Um, so tonight what I have planned is we're going to continue working on this uh, piece, this vanity that we started last week, and I'm going to show you guys um, where I am, what I've got on here, and we're going to uh, start working on the paint process on this one. Um, so if you guys were here last week, we um, added the paper to the front. And I, I got through two drawer fronts. We actually did this side on camera, two drawer fronts. And then I did, I ended up doing these center portions. And I didn't, um, I did one on camera and I thought I would never be able to get this paper to wrap um, the moldings on here. Um, and I tried one and it worked. This paper has amazing stretch. This is from Mint by Michelle. This is one of her brand new release papers called Peach Petals. Um, it's just gorgeous. I love the size and scale of the flowers. I love the coloring in them. They're very subtle, which is right up my alley. I'm not a super bold color kind of person. And I think it's just very feminine. So I'm putting it on a vanity. This does have a mirror um, and it does have a chair. What's actually, the mirror that goes look like? With it. Can you do that again? Yeah, it's actually behind me. <laughs> it's not two of me that you're looking at. That's a mirror behind me. Um, so we did these drawers on camera. So if you want to see the process for the papers, go check out my video from last week. And tonight we're going to add some paint or some paint to this. Um, but I'm also going to talk to you guys a little bit because I've got a topic that I think is important that I want to chat on. So I'll probably talk to you guys about it while I work on the paint for this. Are you, is it time for my raise? Is that why? Um, yes. I think it's really important I, I discuss with the board. Oh, yeah. Oh, literally the yeah, board. The board. <laughs> yeah, Two like, by six. Yeah. <laughs> like a cabinet door, maybe. Um, no, the topic that I want to talk to you guys about is contracts. Um, and I think it's super important to be aware of. I'm shaking my paint. This is Mint by Michelle paint that we're going to use tonight. And let me tell you the colors um, that I have out. Oh, so, hey, Tarnia. Hi, Tarnia. Um, so I've got Time and Space, which is black, which is a black from Mint by Michelle. I've got Stoneware Clay, which is a, I'm going to show you the color on the package. Can you guys see it on the front of the package? It's, um, it's kind of a mauve clay. Uh, it's got a little bit of gray undertones, just a very kind of, kind of sophisticated feeling color. I might incorporate Juicy Peach, which is a new color from Mint by Michelle, and it's a true peach. It's very, the colors on these labels are very much accurate. So Juicy Peach, and then this is Woolen Jumper, which is like a creamy white and ivory color. So that's my color scheme for tonight. I'm going to pop these lids. Um, okay, so what I want to talk to you guys about contracts is um, who you do business with matters. Because when you're in a situation, um, and, and as small businesses, we're required to look at contracts, sign contracts, review contracts, be okay with contracts. Um, um, and I'm going to tell you right now, a contract is not worth the paper that it's written on. It's not. This may be an extremely cynical view of business, but it's coming from experience that if you choose to go into business with a company who's regularly known to violate contracts, this was my situation with Dixie Bell. It didn't matter that I had a contract. It doesn't matter. It only matters. A contract is only worth what you're willing to litigate over, what you're willing to sue for. If you're not willing to sue for it, then the contract means nothing. It can be violated at the drop of a hat. And there's, I mean, that's why who you do business with matters. If it's a company that has a reputation for violating contracts, then you might as well take that contract you have and tear it up. Um, litigation is extremely expensive. So the idea that you can just find all these attorneys that will take cases on contingency, contingency means that they will only accept payment if you win. Um, for attorneys to do that, they want the case to be worth a significant amount, usually six figures plus. So you can imagine how most small businesses are not going to have losses to that extent. So then if you, if you can't find a, an attorney on contingency, which is, you know, probably the most common case, 
Tarnia says uh, she writes contracts for a living. Oh, You're yeah. absolutely right. Yes. I mean, it's a really sad and scary realization. Um, okay, so if you are if you have to litigate a contract, I'm turning to the side of this piece, and we're actually going to work on the side of this one You're tonight. scaring me as you hit the key. Yeah, sorry. I'm getting even closer to you guys. But I literally can't go back any further on this. I'm going to hit the wall. Grab my brushes. Um, so an attorney on contingency wants the case to be worth a significant amount of money. Six figures plus an attorney's fees for them easily because they have to figure that they're accepting all of the risk for that case so they want to be guaranteed a win they're knowing that they could go into it having to fight that case for uh, three to five years in order to ever see a dime out of it okay so uh, it makes sense why even though they take a large on, on contingency they take a larger percentage of your winnings why they would want the case to be worth a significant amount before they're willing to look at it, okay? So for the most part, as a small business, and I'm a small business, I, I'm about as small as a business gets, <laughs> my business is me, okay? I don't have staff, it's literally one person. Um, I do have an LLC, um, so, um, and that's just to protect me and my family um, against losses to our, to our personal assets. So, you know, I do recommend that if you're going to be getting into business that you separate your business finances from your personal. Um, and yeah, you're offending people. I'm part of your staff. Yeah. Sorry. I, yeah. Well, I mean, I'm yeah, technically, <laughs> technically Sean, uh, he's not, he's not very well paid though. So if you are, you know, reputation matters. If you're going into business with somebody and you already know up front that they have a tendency to violate contracts, this was my this is my case with Dixie Bell. If we don't, if nobody talks about the the fact that they do and have a history of violating contracts, then how are you supposed to know? Okay, and so then you are going. This is um, woolen jumper. I'm going to start with up top here. Um, you are going into business with them. Um, as far as litigation. So if you can find someone on contingency, great, probably not gonna happen. Um, this was, Sean and I went through this several years ago. We had to actually uh, sue a home builder along with uh, our entire street that purchased new homes because things were missed on the title reports for the homes. And so we uh, did have to join into a lawsuit with everybody on our street. And we were able to find an attorney who took the case on contingency. It ended up taking two years and we ended up having to settle out of court. Um, only about 3% of cases that are, uh, that are filed ever see a courtroom, okay? So chances are that you're going to fight it for two to five years and end up in a settlement that's less than the amount you were even owed in the first place, okay? And it's going to have terms. Okay, some terms might be an agreement that silences you, that you can never speak about it again. That is a really common term in a settlement. So not only do you um, end up spending a large sum of money, easy, easy, easy five figures, okay, if not six figures to, to see a court case through, but then you um, are likely go, I'm adding, uh, this is just water in a Mr. Bottle, and I'm just making sure I get coverage. This is a, a light color, this is an ivory color, so I'm just making sure I get coverage, brushing it vertically and horizontally and then cleaning up my brush strokes. I'm using my Klingon S50 brush. Um, I lost my paint color, there it is. So, I, I mean, this idea that you're going, that you can just use the legal system and it's cheap or free is, I don't know, it's just, it couldn't, it couldn't be more false. It's not courtroom TV. Yeah, it's, it's not Judge Judy, you know, like, um, you know, people have brought up the idea to us of a GoFundMe, but then I'm looking at what I spend other people's money in a way that I don't even know if I could spend my own. Um, and I'm not saying that I won't. I'm not, that's not what I'm saying at all. Um, I've not exhausted this option. I just want people to understand when you're going into business with somebody, reputation matters because contracts are not worth the paper that they're drawn on. 
Um, a larger business, especially in, in, in our industry, a larger business will swallow a small business, a small single person business in court fees in no, no time flat. That's the game that they're playing. So think about this. If, um, if you're in business with somebody and they knowingly violate a contract, let's say they knowingly violate 10 contracts. Well, if only one person sues, then they still won. It still ended up being a viable business choice to violate those contracts. Um, it worked in their favor because they still had nine cases where they ended up getting away with it. And I think especially as, as small businesses, we end up minimizing our losses and walking away from it. This is the Klingon B12 brush, and I'm going to use it to work these colors together. This is the stoneware clay and the woolen jumper. And I'm going to just get a very subtle blend between the two, just brushing them together, going up and down, kind of using a cross hatching motion with my brush. Okay, so if you go into business and so you already know someone has a, a reputation like this, you are totally taking that chance. Um, Yes, I still recommend having contracts reviewed by an attorney before you sign anything, you, especially if the company drew the contract, it's definitely going to be in the company's favor. They're not drawing contracts to favor the people signing it. They're drawing contracts to favor themselves. Um, this is a really sad and scary realization, especially as companies in, in the painting industry. Um, I shouldn't say companies because really it's just one, but are employing contracts that are ridiculously restrictive and punitive towards small businesses. Um, I can't tell you, yes, I have my situation with Dixie Bell, how many other people have also similar situations with them. Um, retailers that have had their territories violated, um, artists that have, have taken losses, um, companies that they've you know, infringed on um, um, intellectual property. Litigation is extremely expensive. And so playing by big business practices, it, it pays off. It pays off for these companies and it's super sad. It, it has made me extremely cynical and very cautious about who I do business with and how I do business with them. I can't tell you how many people have messaged me and said, thank you for talking about this because nobody talks about it. And especially, you know, new artists that might be in my situation. Not liking this spot right here it looks really dark to me and it could just be that paint is a little more dry. I'm just adding some water. Um, so especially small, small businesses, small artists, um, you think that you're going to start growing your business. And if nobody tells you, hey, beware of these things that can happen, how do you know? Um, you know, artists have choices about what paint companies they might work with. Um, retailers have choices about what brands they might carry in their shop. And being aware of that company's reputation, you become tied to the reputation of that company. So I'm getting, I can't even tell you how many messages right now telling me, um, you're hurting the, the businesses that are carrying the paint. Well, no, they ch are choosing to be in business with a company that behaves this way. I'm just telling my story. If my story makes them look unfavorable, it's because they have business practices that are unfavorable. It has nothing to, it, you know, punishing me for talking about them is absolutely crazy. And that seems to be the method. However, I need to also acknowledge that it's only from people that are trying to sell the paint that feel that way. The public wants to know this stuff, wants to know who they're doing business with. Um, they want to know how um, the people that they trust feel about that paint company. Okay, I think I, I think I like this. I'm going to blend this with the black a little bit more down here. And I think I'm going to leave this side. Let's turn this to, can turn this to the back? I need to do the entire back on this. Hold on. I don't always paint the backs of pieces, but I did this one because it has a finished back on it. So let's go ahead and do the back while I keep chatting you guys up. Okay, I'm gonna do a light <laughs> sanding on the back. 
I don't know, how do you guys feel? Do you feel like this information is helpful? So, so where I was going with that is you become tied to the reputation of the people you choose to go into business with. I'm going to make a huge point here. The losses that Dixie Bell has chosen to take over my situation far exceed the amount that they owed me in the first place, which means they are a company who will make business decisions strictly to be punitive. Think about that for a minute. If you choose to get into business with somebody like that, somebody who will make business decisions based solely on being stubborn and punitive, you are going to suffer consequences for that. It's not smart. Um, when I went through this situation, I had other companies say, Brandy, this is ridiculous. You don't leave stuff like this outstanding. You take care of it. You take care of it. You don't ignore it. You don't uh, argue. You, you don't try to fight it. You don't go toe to toe with it publicly. It's not smart. It puts everybody at risk and making me responsible for a company that will make choices like that. What? I'm being told right now that I should be quiet and stop talking. And all that does is hide it and allow it to continue. Um, and I won't be part of that because I can't tell you how many small businesses have told me, thank you. I almost signed that contract. I didn't know. They reached out to me. I almost did it. And they would have, you know, one that did sign the contract and was in a panic for how to get out of it and what to do. I can't have that on my conscience. I absolutely won't. I wish I, I wish I knew. I wish somebody would have told me stuff. Um, I wish my business wasn't in this role. Most of the people that are attacking me and Cassidy are on the payroll, meaning that they get an income from that company. So of course it's not a neutral judgment. Other artists that want to talk about me, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you something, and I'm going to say this. I've never spoken about the other artists involved. Um, one in particular has chosen to speak out about me and say that people don't know the full story. In my situation, they told their side of the story. They told it very publicly. I reposted it. I shared it. The public sat there and found holes in it and commented and asked questions. And in exchange, they had their comments deleted by the brand. So they did tell their story, their side of the story. It, it's already out there. It's been out there for two years. I reposted it. If you want to see it, let me know. Message me. I'll happily send you a copy of it. It is full of holes. And so what they're doing this time around is asking for one-on-one -on -one conversations with people. And that's just to avoid making public statements because none of it can stand up to scrutiny. They're saying what people want to hear to do damage control and, and avoid saying things publicly that have noticeable holes in them. Here and here. This is all going on behind the scenes. Me and Cassidy have been attacked ruthlessly, doxxed. Um, I mean, you name it. The, there have been no limits no limits to the attacks that we are enduring. Um, so my patience and tolerance has gone out the window. My sympathy, anyone who chooses to be in business with them at this point has, is making the choice to tie their reputation to it. Um, I don't know. Go talk to the brand and ask why they're making these choices that don't make any sense. They could solve the problem by just being decent people, but... That's not going on. So, um, lots of water, guys. Just keeping my paint wet so that I can talk and work at the same time. The big brush you're using is a what? This is the Klingon B12. I have two of them out tonight, actually. One's got the handle, one does not. And the reason I have two, yeah, sorry, same brush. I just, the handle screws off. You can take it on or off. And I like it both ways. I actually sometimes will just keep the handle on so that I don't lose it. And I'm using two different ones because I've got one down here to blend the black. Because if I took the same brush and then went up here and blended this, that black is going to muddy up my lighter colors. So I've got one doing my lighter colors and then one doing the black. And that's just because black will take over a light color very, very quickly. 
Um, I don't know. The point that I want to make is choose who you do business with carefully because the, the costs of it can be astronomical and the legal system is not, uh, you know, I don't know where we get this idea that the legal system is so accessible. It's, it's not. It actually works against small businesses and it favors the big guy. And they know that and that's what they gamble on. It's a big business tactic to, to gamble on swallowing someone up legally. It's super sad. Um, well, again, if you violate contracts with 10 people, one only files and actually yes. gets something out of it, it's... All 10 would have to file. And it's then a roulette got, game. You've got 10 people that have to decide, do I want to put my family through that? Do I want to put my savings into that? Do I want to keep going through this for another five years? You know, how much are my losses? You know, everybody's losses are going to be different when you're in a group like that. Um, there's so much that goes into that, into a group, um, to, to, to form a class action, a class, your case is, sorry, I have a bunch of hairs in this and I don't know what from, I think it's, I don't know what it's from. Oh, was it on the floor? No, cause it was, it was in here already. Oh. So it might've been, I don't know. Um, your cases have to have enough in common to, for you to form a class together. So just saying, well, they broke a contract for all of us isn't enough. It has to be all the same circumstances. Um, and then everybody's losses are going to differ in a class. Um, here's what I'll also say. Class action attorneys on contingency, nope, they want a $150,000 retainer fee. Okay? <laughs> Think about that for a second. I mean, it's super sad. I just want people to understand how this stuff happens and protect yourself good lord never sign a contract without having an attorney look it over and be aware who you are going into business with because when stuff hits the fan <coughs> that contract will not protect you it will not i can promise you i have a contract it doesn't matter to anybody um so these are big decisions that face small businesses. This is just the woolen jumper that I'm applying on this section here in the yeah, center. Yeah, three colors that you're using are? Three colors is a uh, woolen jumper is the ivory, um, which I'm gonna need another coat on. Let me tell you why, because when I stained this top last night, I got a little bit of my stain and the white isn't covering it in one coat. So I'm gonna have to come back on this white and give it and touch those spots up which stinks and that's my fault. Uh, it's not you, it's the holder for the phone. Kind of a pain. Um, nobody talks about this stuff. Nobody tells you and you think, oh, it's a great opportunity and um, you can you know, grow your business. I mean, I'll tell you, this business is not trying to grow your business. They're trying to grow their business and they're gonna use you to do it. Um, there is no regard to so how a company like that stays in business, it's a numbers game. It's, it, well, it's Walmart. It is the Walmart of the paint industry, you guys. So think about how Walmart does business. All you have to do is be bigger and cheaper. You don't have to be better. Um, you just have to be bigger and cheaper. Uh, dumping a ton of money into marketing to drown out the small guys, and you just become Walmart. Now, don't get me wrong, Walmart has a place, but you know, a lot of people have a distaste for Walmart because they do business that way. So it's a business tactic. It's a big business tactic in a small business world. So think about a small business like myself going up against some, something like that that has those types of ideas. What stain color did you use? Um, I, I actually mixed two stains. It's... Um, Minwax, Jacobian, and Ebony. So it's really dark. Uh, the, the Ebony takes out some of the red tones that are in the Jacobian. Jacobian is one of my favorite dark skin colors from Minwax. Super upset. I've got tons of marks in my white paint. That's just my own fault. My suggestion is uh, do the top first. And I didn't. Oh, Donna says, well, apparently Walmart's overcharging for chicken now. What? She said, did you see the Instagram? No. Hmm. Overcharging for chicken? Is that what she said? Overcharging? Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Now you're going to make me go look it up. Um, it's just big business tactics and it swallows up the small guy. It eats, 
you know, competition. It works, but just be hyper aware of it because, you know, here we love to support our small business friends and, um, you know, help everybody grow. And we're in, you know, the painting industry is a really small and tight knit community. Everybody knows what everybody's doing. Um, and this, this stuff, you know, okay, here's some examples. When I left, instead of changing their tactics to really say, hey, okay, we don't want to, we don't want to be known for this. You know, we want to, uh, this color is called stoneware clay. I love this color. It's super sophisticated. It's very different. Um, instead of cleaning up and saying, we don't want to do business like this. We made a mistake. Let's change it so that this doesn't happen. They actually made changes to facilitate it being able to happen more. And how they did that was by employing a contract for artists that includes clauses that allow them to do what they did to me with impunity. Like, that's how it was handled. Don't sign that contract, guys. But even if you do, if you violate it, they're going to take you to court for it. If they violate it, good luck. <laughs> it's so crazy. Um, I, I, it's just, it's totally changed how I look at doing business with people. And, and that's wrong because not every company that's in our industry thinks like this. I don't know what is going on. It must be tons of fuzzes in my, I'm not setting my brush down directly. I don't know where it's picking them up. Um, I don't know, always have an attorney review your contracts. If it's getting bigger than what you're willing to walk away from, be hyper aware of who you're do doing business with. And then when you see small businesses walk away from legitimate losses, understand what they're up against. It's, it's David, David and Goliath. Super sad. So that's kind of what I wanted to say tonight is um, I wanted people to be a little more realistic about um, what the legal system looks like for small businesses and thinking that you're protected and, you know, oh, if you've got it in writing, then it's ironclad. It's only ironclad if you're willing to fight for it financially. If you're not, not willing, not just willing, if you're able, you have to be able. And I mean, easily fighting a court case for two to five years, you're looking at six-figure attorney's fees. Easily. I don't know. Is this scaring people? Are you guys at home crying now? I am. <laughs> yeah, me too. No kidding. Um, you know, some people start GoFundMe. The problem I have with that is spending other people's money in risky ways. You know, I, if I wouldn't do it, if I wouldn't do it to myself and my family, I wouldn't do it to somebody else's family either. Doesn't mean it's not, you know, what's going on is, isn't wrong and doesn't need to be stood up against because I 100% believe that. And, and, and by all means, you guys, I don't want you to think this means I'm saying that I'm out of the game. I just want people to understand the, um, the thought process that has to happen and the decisions that are involved. And the, the process also, it takes years. It's not something that you're going to get your money back. You just go to court and be like, look, here's my contract. And the judge is going to be like, oh, yeah, you have a contract. No problem here. Write her a check. Um, it's going to take years. Well, and then you still have to chase it. Yes. And then you have to try to collect on it. <laughs> you know, th that doesn't even mean that just because you have a judgment, uh, um, you're going to get your money back. Now, a company that does all of this, and let's say they had to pay out money, do you think it would be easy to collect that money yeah, from? No. Hmm. They're going to challenge you at every single step. Every single step they're going to challenge you because that is literally the game that they're playing. They're literally gambling on you not being able or willing or... Um, you know, or thinking, oh, my losses aren't big enough. I'm just, I'm just going to have to walk away from this one. That's what's going on. It's so sad. It is so sad. And it's, I mean, we're up to like hundreds of people at this point. It is so, so sad and so disturbing. Um, 
then the ones that are choosing to stick around are blaming the people that are speaking up and saying, hey, look, this is going on. This isn't right. Be aware. Be cautious. Um, I don't know. It's a business strategy, guys. And we, you know, we need to talk about this because more people get involved in business with this and then it's just more collateral damage and more of these little tiny losses. Well, you take a $3,000 loss here and 5,000 here and 2,000 there and pretty soon it adds up to $50,000, you know, in profits before you know that was just taken from little tiny businesses. It's, it's a strategy. So a couple things, somebody made the comment that you should start your own paint line. Oh my gosh, never. <laughs> and then another paint company came up. Um, and then the question of, can you guys not do a class action? Um, well, there's, um, there's different cases going on. So there, like I said, they have to be able to be tied together. Obviously, me and Cassidy have a way to be tied together. All the retailers have a way to be tied together. Do me and Cassidy have a way to be tied to the retailers? You know, there's, it's possible. It's possible. Um, it just gets a little, you know, a little more difficult. And the problem is a lot of the retailers are those people that are like, oh, I only lost 3000 or 5000 or 6000 It's not that big of a deal. Do I want to fight it for five years in court? See what I'm saying? Um, you know, me and Cassidy have very different losses, um, and the retainers are astronomical. So if you know an attorney that wants a, a, a slam dunk contract case on contingency, call me. Call me. Every time I talk to an attorney, it takes an hour on the phone just to explain the situation. Just to explain what even happened is an hour, and, um, and if they don't hear mega dollars, I'm gonna do this side real quick. Um, if they don't hear mega dollars, then I don't know. They want, you know, not everything is Aaron Brockovich. What? Who? I know. I wish. Julie Roberts. The reason I'm saying this is, don't get me wrong. Like I, I absolutely have a a, a case. I absolutely have a cut and dry contract violation case. Uh, I mean, it's 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 that simple. It's just. Um, it takes a huge toll, you guys. Um, my business is online. I lost my sanding sponge. You see it? I don't think you lost it. You probably, oh, it's right behind you. Um, my business is online. So people are also say to me, don't pay attention to it. Don't read it. Um, for me to not read it, I would have to not be online where my business is every time somebody tags me you guys know if you follow my page i'm very responsive because i respect that you guys took the time somebody took the time to message me or comment or whatever i try to engage all of that that's a big part of how my business has been successful and i totally respect you know everyone that follows me and um so to say oh just ignore it well of course i mean that like that's literally my business is to be online and participating and that means seeing um me and sean have received attacks at our home um cassidy has received attacks at our home like it's bananas how far it's gotten and this is all i've done is tell my story i've not organized a boycott and like you know i don't know set death threats or anything like that and it has it is over the top what the brand is doing is not issuing a public statement and telling everyone to call them one-on-one, -on -one. okay? <laughs> it's a game. They're playing people because then one-on-one -on -one they can say whatever that person wants to hear um, to take their side and it, can't, it, it doesn't ever have to stand up to scrutiny. So that's what's going on. And then those people are taking those stories and putting stuff out publicly that is being said and fed and, you know, dropped and hinted or whatever you want to call it and taking it and doing the dirty work. It's all very, I don't know, coordinated. So do I see it? Absolutely. I've been doing this for two years. 
for two years. I've been telling the same story, saying the same things, and being attacked for it. For just telling a story. It, it's been the same facts the entire time that are corroborated by all five people that left. It's, it's, I mean, it's pretty hard to argue at this point whether or not it happened. I, I would hope that we're past that, whether or not it happened being an argument. Um, I, I don't even know what the argument is at this point. So I'm adding a lot of water and I'm fading this section out right here and adding a good size overlap so that when I start working these colors together, there's already a nice section that kind of it has started working into each other. If you left it right there, it looks like I painted it. It does, huh? It's kind of, it's kind of Wait, a cool what? look. You could leave it like that. Huh? Looks great. I love yeah. it. Um, so I don't know what the argument is at this point. What, you know, if, if, if there's the, the, any argument, whether or not it really happened. Oh, I know what I was going to say. The argument that there's two sides to every story. I'm so tired of that one. They told their side of the story. I posted it on my pages. It was full of a million holes. The public recognized it and called them out on it. And what they did to the public is they deleted all your comments. Oh, I guarantee it, Michelle. She said a bit big money that there's people come spies coming onto your lives. Oh, I guarantee oh, yeah. it. Hello, everyone. Howdy. Sign up. I mean, here's my feeling on it. Don't follow my page. I'm not coming at you on your page. Get off my page. If I know they're here, I block them because they don't have any legitimate business being here. Um, by no means am I t telling people like that there's there is lawyers involved, thoroughly involved. Oh, thanks, April. A tax at your home, this Texas girl will be there in a heartbeat. Uh -huh. <laughs> She's packing. <laughs> Lawyers are thoroughly involved. Have been for, I've had an attorney from day one who has told me what I'm allowed to say. I am allowed to say a factual recount of what happened to me, which is always what I've said. I'm, it's not slanderous. The truth cannot be slanderous. It is exactly what happened. It is a timeline with details and, I mean... <laughs> It's just very, that part's very straightforward. So I am, a, I, I do not have a contract that prevents me from talking about it. However, anybody who works for that company currently, you will never hear the truth from them. Doesn't matter what happens, they have a contract that says they cannot talk. That right there should be a massive red flag. I would have never signed that contract, so I guess one way or another I was going to be out. Um, you will never get the truth. I talk because I have the ability and anyone who comes behind me will never be able to do it again. That horrifies me. It horrifies me to have small businesses keeping massive secrets and feeling as alone as I felt at some points in these past couple years. I'm grateful to uh, Bianca and Kristana and um, Emily and people who went through this situation with me and know the truth beyond a shadow of a doubt. And... Um, you know, are, will, have, have stood up and told their story, whether, you know, I might be the loudest, but everybody at some point has told the same story. You know, it just depends on whether you are aware that they've already told it. It's been told by multiple people at this point. It's not just me. I'm just, I just have the largest presence. And so mine is the loudest voice. And that's fine. You know, I knew that when I decided to speak out that that was what I was committing to and that was what I was choosing and I still stand behind that choice because I don't want this to be a part of our industry. Um, I want people to be aware so you know sunlight is the best disinfectant right Wash it out say we are not doing business like this enough is enough so whew. my mister bottle doesn't want to spray sideways and I'm kind of <laughs> wanting to spray it sideways so what do you guys think? Informative live tonight? Is everyone scared of your contracts now? Not every well, Facebook is really acting up. Like it doesn't show me how many people are on. Comments are blowing through. Hmm. It's kind of kind of an oddity thing going on right now. Somebody got I saw the message earlier. Somebody went over to YouTube because they got booted off of Facebook. Yeah, it's probably getting reported. Wouldn't doubt. I bring this up because there was a thread in a group and it's very active and it's a lot of 
talking and I respond. I'm not going to be quiet. I didn't come this far to all of a sudden be like, okay, I'm sorry. No, thanks so much. 154 people. So I'm going to continue to speak up and I'm, I hope um, that it never happens to anybody again. And Cassidy has been extremely brave, but coming at you, it's hard and fast. Um, the public is mean. Uh, I'm sorry, not, I don't want to say the public because that's not true. Overwhelm, there's overwhelming support, more support than non-support. But, but the internet can be mean. And um, there's been doxing and threats and just openly, unabashedly, um, you know, throwing it our way. So when I talk about it, it's because I don't expect that everybody's going to see this going on because not everybody is doing, you know, my business all the time. I'm going to pull these out and paint around the front. Um, but it is going on, and people should be aware. And, you know, especially if you're considering who to go into business with. <laughs> Down to 130. <laughs> dropping like flies. I guess the spies are worried. <laughs> all right. We're going to miss you guys. It's okay. I know who you are. We're already well acquainted. Honestly, I don't really care at this point. I don't. I mean, the more they come at me, the more motivated I am to just fight the fight. I'm not going away. This happened. It is ridiculous that I would be shamed for it. If you choose to be in business with a company like this, then own it and know that they are putting you at risk every single day. And that's not my fault. Um, I just like how people live in secrecy. Yeah, that the answer is just don't talk about it so I can continue to sell paint to the public. I'm sorry, but that doesn't sit well with my stomach. Um, ethics matter to people. People make buying decisions. And, you know, uh, I, I'm not going to be quiet so, so people can be comfortable. Sometimes the truth is uncomfortable, but that's the only way that change happens. And, man... If this, if I can't, if I can't at least bring about some change, I don't know what all this was for. That's my, you know. Well, that was, yeah, from the get-go. Yeah. So, um, there is another artist that is choosing to speak on me. I've never chosen to speak on other artists. I'm going to tell you a story about that artist. I offered a phone conversation to that person, another, one of the company's brand ambassadors. Um, I offered to have a phone conversation after I left to say, hey, there's a lot that happened that you don't know about because I was the team lead. I fielded, fielded a lot of the communication. Um, let's have a talk so you know. And that person um, never responded to me and blocked me. Um, I've posted on some pages copies of my communications that I sent in, the, in my last days. They were professional. They were constructive. I'm extremely proud of them. Um, I stand by them to this day completely. I was the only one who ever made suggestions to uh, bring resolution. The brand never one time proposed anything, and my and my communications were never responded to. Juicy Peach. Juicy Peach. It's my code name. <laughs> you might need to talk that one over. <laughs> um, I'm not. I actually did, decided to not use the Juicy Peach. I'm kind of just liking the. Stoneware clay. And I'm just giving it a nice wide overlap with the um, woolen jumper. So I'm sorry to Michelle, whose paint I was using tonight, meant by Michelle, for talking about all this, but I think it's super duper important, you guys. Contracts. Ugh. Um, <laughs> April, I want to know who this other artist is so bad. Well, I'll tell you because she's out there, blah, 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 and I've never gone at her. That's Amy. She doesn't know the whole story. She declined a conversation from me. I offered it in a very non-aggressive way. And if that person, and then is out there at the same time saying to everybody, you don't know the whole story. Literally, she doesn't know the whole story and is telling people you don't know the whole story. Is absolutely ridiculous. So if you don't want me to name you, don't name me. Don't be out there talking. 
if you don't want to be called out for the fact that you don't want to what do you want me to do? I've never said, I've never said anything about you, but you want to get involved and you literally don't know the story. You don't know. Because nobody chose to talk to you at the end because they didn't trust you. So. Yeah. It's my lowdown tonight. It's all out there in the open, guys. It always has been, but I am super fired up because I'm so sick of the attacks. And if this company really wanted to put it to rest, then put it to rest. Then take care of your business and stop putting other small businesses in jeopardy, but it is not me doing it. Hmm. Apparently Emily saw it. Emily Ann. I was surprised to oh, see yeah. Amy's comments. Yes. Yeah, it's not the first time. I, it's been going on. It's happened before, and I've never said the name, and I've never addressed it. But honestly, it's so ridiculous that I offered the communication to say, there are things you do not know. And she didn't respond and blocked me. And then wants to be out there saying, you don't know the whole truth. She literally doesn't know the whole truth. So, I mean, <laughs> it's so silly. It's so ironic. So, I don't know. Welcome to my world. If you want to get in it, let's get in it. Yeah, there's a lot of glass houses out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. It stinks, guys. It stinks. And, all the, and it's for something that happened to me. Not by me. It happened to me. Yeah, I need to do this side right here. It looks this side is not done. Um, but I kind of wanted to see where it matches up with my drawers. So yeah, I think this is where my coloring is going to land. I kind of like the softness. I think I'm going to. I'm. I don't know. I might have little bits of the peach some places, maybe on the mirror. But I don't think I'm going to do a lot of it, just because I really like the kind of coolness of these colors. So. I just needed to get that off all off my chest because it's just been coming at me hard and fast for the past couple days and I'm just like um it's like a lead weight yeah but I don't want other people to go through this I really don't I really just want it to stop and like um for people to be aware I'll never stop telling my story it happened to me um especially as it happens to more and more people I mean even the stuff that you guys see publicly that's not even the extent of it there's even more People that are not willing to speak publicly because it's hard. You know that you're going to be a target if you speak publicly. That's super sad, you guys. I mean, we should not be targeting people that are telling stuff that's happened to them. We, sh we just shouldn't be. Even if you don't support it, then move on by. But I'm not coming for people. I've just told my story. Um, yeah, so. All right, you guys. Thank you to Mint by Michelle. Um, this piece is going to be gorgeous and I love these colors together with this paper. Uh, the colors I used again are Woolen Jumper, Stoneware Clay, and Time and Space. And um, Juicy Peach. One you didn't, yeah. Juicy Peach is a contender. I don't know. I feel like I should, but I'm not sure how or where. And again, as far as the color swatch on the front, they're pretty, you mentioned, on the can. Uh, oh, yeah, pretty accurate. As far as the accuracy. You guys want to see the lid on this one? So um, Which is sometimes if you have questions, I will answer questions that I'm able to answer. Um, there's not a lot of question here. You know, my story is corroborated by five different people. Uh, Cassidy has a recorded phone conversation and a contract. Like, it's pretty black and white at this point. So anybody who wants to say there's two sides to every story... <laughs> What's the other side? It's out there, you guys. It's out. It's been said, and it's full of holes. It doesn't hold water. It um. That's why it's not being said because there isn't a side to the story. It's 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 just a business strategy. So, just keep that in mind. That was my point in the beginning: is to keep that in mind when you're choosing who to go into business with. That businesses that ha have a strategy like that. Um. Good luck. Tarnia was right. She, I mean, she does contracts. She knows what it's all about. So, all right, you guys, this paper from Mint by Michelle is called Juicy Peach, right? What? No, it's not called No, that. that's, that's the, the paint. paint. <laughs> it's called Peach Petals. Oh, I know what I wanted to say. This week, was, my birthday was uh, this week. We, what? We were at a water polo tournament all weekend, played eight games down in Southern California, which was a seven-hour drive there and back. Um... I'm totally behind on my editing. I have so many finished pieces and I just need to 
mad dash edit. And so that's what I've been doing. I did a bunch today. Um, so I'm catching up on my editing and I've got a bunch of stuff to come out. And so I've been a little quiet this week, but I have a lot of new content to share with you guys. So you guys follow my YouTube channel and I'll get some of that out there um, as I as I get as I get videos and stuff edited and shorts and reels and YouTube and all the stuff. So, and all the things. All the things. Um, it was a really fun weekend, though. And thank you for all the happy birthday wishes. It was a great birthday. We had a blast. We surprised the kids after their tournament with a trip to Disneyland. It was super fun. I really like driving 14 hours and 24 hours. Yeah. It was a good time. Yeah. Well, I had fun. two of my kids with me. And, and so I called Sean and was like, hey, me and another parent are talking about this. What do you think? And he was like, we can't not do the third. And I was like, all right, it's up to you. You have to be the one driving. And so he got in the car and drove him down so that he wouldn't miss out. It was pretty cool. So we went with a group of teenagers, super fun group of kids. I love being with them. They're just really good kids. And um, we had a great time. And then drove back, and I was worthless after that. So thank you for all the birthday wishes. It was a great birthday. Um, you guys, I will be at the Painters Business Academy in um, – the Atlanta, Georgia area, June 28th through 30th. Um, so check that out, Painters Business Academy. I have a link for that that I will throw up too. I also have a coupon code for 5% off that I'll add to this post. So check out Painters Business Academy in the Atlanta, Georgia area, June 28th through 30th. It's a really fun event. Lodging is included. It's a whole immersive event. Annie Sloan will be there. Um, Fusion Mineral Paint, Wise Owl will be there. Um, would you bend, um, oh my gosh, uh, uh, artistic painting studios with foils. There's hands-on demonstrations, painting demonstrations, um, you know, lots of social time, good food. And it's a really fun event. This is my, my third year doing it because I like doing it so much. So check that out. I'll throw up the link on this too. And um, other than that, you guys have a great weekend and I'll catch you next week.